A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. The thrilling stories of the masked rider of justice cannot be found in the written pages of history. But his deeds will live forever in the memories of the people of seven western states who still tell the story of the famous mystery rider. The thundering hoofs of silver bring us adventure on the trail ahead. The Lone Ranger rides again. Hurry, silver, old fellow. Outlaws are riding down from the hills. Stretch out those great legs of yours. Hail! As the masked man rode by on Silver, we heard him say that the outlaws in the hills were threatening to ride again. The hills bordering the town of Greenville made a perfect hiding place for the outlaws that operated in that territory. Cavalry troops were garrisoned nearby, but their presence failed to frighten the bandits. Colonel Dawson, in command, frequently rode to town to visit his daughter Sally. And as our story opens, we hear the angry townspeople commenting on the last attack of the outlaws. Why in thunder don't the troops do something? What are we paying taxes for? Them troops to clean the outlaws out of the hills if they'd only get to it. Hi, look at who's here. It's Dawson. Hi there, Colonel Dawson. Who there, who there, who, who? Where's the sheriff? Here I am, Colonel. And you're just the man I want to see. Sheriff, where's my daughter? Is she safe? Yeah, Colonel, your daughter's safe enough. But there's other folks that ain't. No. Thank goodness. As soon as I heard about the attack, I came here. Yeah, we see that. I don't suppose you're much concerned about Abe Whitcomb's wife. She was killed by them brigands. She was? Yeah, and so was Large Foster and Lem Bixby and about five other men. Was the attack as bad as that? That don't include no mention of 20-odd men that was wounded. Those confounded outlaws. Oh, never mind acting indignant, Colonel. You go see your daughter. Make sure she's safe. Then get back to your camp. Don't order your men to charge them hills and clean out the killers, though. Why not? Might be dangerous work for the soldiers. Some of your men might get hurt. Now, look here, Sheriff. I've told you before what we've done about those outlaws. I'm simply stationed here to carry out orders from Washington. Sure, we savvy. Washington don't care nothing about what happens to the settlers in a place like this. It's a lot cheaper to let us folks get killed off than it'd be to have some of the soldiers get hurt. You feel that we should attack the hills and clean out the outlaws. Well, there's nothing I'd sooner do, but I can't until I get instructions. I can give you instructions. Just ride up to them and blaze away with gunfire. Instructions from Washington. Never mind, Colonel Dawson. We ain't counting on nothing from the government, so we ain't disappointed none. Your daughter's in Ma Tyndall's house there. Yeah. You better go talk to her. Maybe she'll have something to say about how we folks in Greenville feed. Watch my horse. Watch your own horse. Mm, those men only understood. I'd lose my command if I... Oh, it's you. How do you do, Mrs. Tyndall? If you're here to speak to your daughter, you'll find her in the next room. Mrs. Tyndall, one minute. Ain't the time to talk. You can let yourself out when you're ready to leave. Uh, 
She feels the same as everyone else. Oh. Oh, Dad. Sally, thank goodness you're safe. I wish they'd killed me. What? Oh, you don't know how the folks here feel. The way I'm pointed at because you don't do anything about the murderers in the hills. Here is a town that suffered at the hands of the outlaws half a dozen times. Those killers stay right in the hills almost a stone's throw from your camp. And you don't do a thing about it. I know. Sally, I've sent word to Washington. I'm just waiting for a reply. Waiting? That's what you said the last time. That's all you ever say. But, Sally, you know the position I'm in. I can't order my men to leave the fort and ride into the hills. You're stationed here to protect folks. I'm here to keep the Indians controlled. I can't take over the work of the state officials and fight outlaws without federal sanction. Suppose that sanction never comes. Then, dear, I'll have to continue to face the jibes and anger of the men in Greenville. Well, I won't continue to face them. I'll leave here. If those orders come from Washington... Come, found those orders, Father. Can't you risk your commission if it means saving everyone here from other attacks? You would have me face court-martial? I'd face court-martial. I'd be glad to. I'd face the firing squad if it meant the cleaning out of all those outlaws. Sally, you're not a soldier. You haven't spent your life obeying orders. Perhaps not, but, but I'm glad of it. Would you like to ride back to the camp with me and see some of your friends? No. It might be a change. No. You could stay a couple of days and then come back. I don't want to see anything more of you or your men. I don't want any part of the army until this town is made safe. But, my dear... Now... Now you'd better go. Following their raid on Greenville, the outlaws returned to their camp in the hills. Their leader was a man called Wolf, a huge man with a cruel face and a surly, overbearing manner. He divided the loot taken from the attack among his men, keeping half for himself. His followers noted his action and grumbled protestingly. You needn't think all of this cash is mine. I got a plenty of it to pay out. Yeah, you pay out a plenty, Wolf, but there's a plenty left. You get as much as all the rest of us put together. And it ain't fair. Oh, so it ain't fair, eh? Well, let me tell you something. If it wasn't for the things I do with my share, there wouldn't none of you be living. How's that? You ain't been attacked by them soldiers, have you? Not yet. You ain't had much trouble getting out of Greenville, the other towns, after you made the attacks, have you? You're getting away with all the raids as slick as wagon grease. And don't you figure there's a reason for it? We hanker to know that reason, Wolf. It's the guys I got in the payroll. I pay them out my share. I know just what's going on all the time. I find out when there's a big chain dig, where most of the men will be, when we raid the houses in the town. I know when Greenville's men was out posse riding so we got attacked. You mean you got spies working? Sure I have. Look at here. This letter come to Lem Bixby by the last stage. He was killed in a raid. That was too bad. Because Lem was working for me. <laughs> Lem got mail by stage. And that same come from one of my pals in the East. This particular letter tells him that orders are going out from Washington the first of the month. What sort of orders? From Washington? Yep. Orders to Colonel Dawson. He wrote to Washington about us? Sure he did. And he asked for permission to make an attack on us and clean us out. Did he get it? He will, unless something's done about it. When was them orders to go out? First of the month. Then they already went. Yep, a couple of days ago. And he'll attack <laughs> us. <laughs> now, Jake, you'll see where I spend my money for your protection. I know them orders left. And I know they're coming by the Pony Express. What's more, I know where we can waylay the pony rider, get him... And do away with them orders. Oh, well, well, that puts things in a new light, don't it? It sure does. No wonder we've been so blame lucky. It wasn't luck at all. It's our boy. Now, are you satisfied? Oh, sure. Yeah. All right, then. Now, a couple of you will have to ride east and meet that pony rider. <laughs> Get up, boy. Get up. Get up. Get up. 
outlaw's activities had brought the Lone Ranger and his faithful Indian companion Tonto into the district. They were riding close to the trail when the pony rider was shot. The sharp crack of the rifle caught their attention and they pressed forward to investigate. The shots came from somewhere near here, Tonto. Uh, me here, horse. Look ahead. Something on trail. Looks like a horse. Get him up, white fellow. Someone has shot the poor beast. Isn't that right? And there's a man. And smoke. Tonto, do you see that smoke? We get there quick now. Come on, Silver. Where? Where killer? Maybe we can trail the killers. Oh, oh, there's Silver. Oh, Silver. Oh, see if there's any hope for the man. Huh? Him, him pony rider. Yes. Help the man if it isn't too late. Horse, dead. I see it is. How about the pony rider? Do what you can for him. I'll stamp out this fire and see if we can save some of the mail. Bullet, get him in back. Other bullet in shoulder. Him, gone. Gone? Uh, Murdered. Not right. And shot from behind. Him, head west. Bullet hit him here. Bullet come from rock over there. Then we'll start from there and try to trail the man who did this. Uh, but first we'll take the time to see if any of this mail is worth taking with us. Another couple of minutes and it would have all been burned. Not right. Here's part of a letter. It's addressed to the commander at Fort Greenville. That near where outlaw hide. The hills beyond Greenville are infested with killers. Uh, Tonto, I'm going to see what this letter says. It heart burned. But some of it's left. I'm going to find out about it. Maybe Tonto go hunt for killer, huh? Wait a minute. Kimosabe, this is an order to Colonel Dawson. What it say? It instructs him to attack the outlaws. That's what plenty people want. You know the situation around Greenville. Uh-huh. Folks there have been hoping and praying for weeks that the army would do something about the outlaws in that, the hills. That's right. This letter is Colonel Dawson's authority to attack. Huh? And gun. Down, Tonto. There. There's killer. He's still behind those rocks, Tonto. We get him to shelter. Behind this rock. Here, Silver. We We've got to capture them alive. Here. Get to your horse. Uh, Ride to the west. Uh, I'll go to the east. We'll move in from both sides of the rock. Get him a plate, brother. Come on, get him Silver. Up. We want them alive, Tonto. Come on, Silver. Throw down your rifle and surrender. Reload. Cut him down. My rifle's dead. Throw down your rifle. Surrender. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. I give up. Oh, pull the Silver. No more. Throw down your rifle. Put up your hands. You smash my hand with that bullet. Oh, oh, oh. Keep them covered, Tonto. Uh. We give up and we surrender. Oh. All right. You got us. Well, what are you going to do about you it? You killed the pony rider. That calls for proof, mister. Maybe we figured you'd done the same. Your mask, ain't you? You know very well we didn't commit that murder. You shoot pony rider from Hind Rock. And you're going to Greenville to face trial for murder. All right, mister. We'll go with you. Reckon it ain't nothing but your word again, ours. But Jake, he got that letter out in the fire. He got it and he dropped it. Oh, huh. where? Where letter? Letter? I did drop it. I dropped it when I drew my guns. Yeah, and it's too late to pick it up. He didn't stamp out all that fire and the letter burned. Now go on, take us to town. We'll stand trial. You'll go to town, all right. And we'll give the commander the information that letter contains. Uh-huh. That's all right. Jake, maybe we You'll might... You shut up and stop worrying. It's our word again, a masked man and an engine. Before they're done, they'll be the ones that'll be on trial for murder. The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now, on with our story. The outlaws near Greenville, knowing that Colonel Dawson could not attack them until he had received orders from Washington, killed the Pony Express rider bringing those orders. The Lone Ranger recovered the letter. But in the battle with the outlaws that followed, it was destroyed. Our next scene takes place in the fort where Colonel Dawson is stationed. He is speaking to his aide. Did you see my daughter when you were in town? Yes, sir. What did she say? She wouldn't speak to me, sir. I saw her and she walked away from me. Then she meant what she said. I beg your pardon, sir. My daughter has been miserably treated by those fools in Greenville. Fools, sir? Yes, fools. If they had an ounce of brains, they'd realize that I can't attack the outlaws without orders from Washington. Even Sally feels that I should violate my instructions. You sent to Washington for permission to attack, sir? Yes. The reply should be here any day now. If I get permission, I'll attack at once. We'll clean out those outlaws in half a day's time. Without that permission, I cannot and will not attack. The people in town think we're afraid, Colonel. They won't give me a chance to explain. Did you explain to your daughter, sir? I tried to, but even Sally won't try to understand. When orders come from Washington, we can vindicate ourselves. What else happened in town? Anything of importance? Yes, sir. A pony rider was killed. Killed? Shot from ambush. A pony rider, you say? Yes, sir. I wonder if... Good Lord... It can't be possible. It was the rider bringing our instruction from the capital. I sincerely hope not, sir. His mail was burned. Who killed him? No one seems to know. A masked man and an Indian came into town with two prisoners. Both were identified as outlaws. And they murdered the pony rider? The masked man claims they did. The others claim the masked man was the murderer. Masked man? Who was he? No one seems to know, sir. The sheriff tried to put him in jail with the others, but he got away. Escaped? Yes, sir. The lawmen seem to think his escape is proof of his guilt. But I... You what? My opinion is of no value, Colonel Dawson. What were you going to say? I thought he might have fled simply to prevent being unmasked. There was something about the man that I... Well, go on. You what? There was something about him that I admired and respected. I wondered at the time if he was the Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger? You've heard of him, sir. Of course. Where did he go when he left Greenville? I don't know. Some men tried to follow him, but they were quickly outdistanced by his horse. That's all you know about it? Yes, sir. After making arrangements for supplies, I left and came back here. What in the world? Stand where you are. The masked man. The same one. How did you get in here? How did you get by the guards? I came here to speak to you, Colonel. You'll find your guards unharmed. It's incredible. It's impossible. How could any man get by those guards? It isn't hard if a man knows this part of the country. You're the man who brought in those two killers, the ones who shot down the pony rider. Yes, Colonel Dawson, before the two opened fire on Toto and me, I read a letter addressed to you. It was partly burned. I wanted to see if there was enough left of it to be of any importance to you. The letter was later destroyed when it fell into the fire while I charged the killers. What was it? What did it say? It was an order from Washington. You were instructed to attack the hills and rout the outlaws, taking as many prisoners as possible, but shooting to kill if necessary. How do I know you're telling the truth? You'll have to take my word for it. But I can't attack on merely the word of a masked man. Colonel, if you'll permit me, sir... I'll vouch for this man. Even that won't do. Lieutenant, send another message to Washington at once. Ask for a copy of the instructions sent by Pony Express, explaining the original was destroyed. But it'll take weeks for that message to get back here. In that time, the outlaws will kill another score of people in Greenville. Without orders, no attack can be made. There were orders. I must see them. I must have them on fire. Colonel Dawson, sometimes a man can carry his military tactics too far. There are times when a good soldier will throw aside regulations if he knows he's right. I act only on written order. You'll have to act before another three weeks or Greenville will rise against you. They've already said all they're going to say. But they haven't started to act. If those outlaws raid that town again, there's no telling what the people will do. Written order. Very well. And now consider yourself under arrest. Obviously, you attacked the guards. Arrest? People have tried to arrest me before, Colonel Dawson. Get him. Stop him. I'll try. The masked man had failed to persuade the colonel to act. The situation was desperate. The outlaws were still free to raid as they pleased, and the Lone Ranger felt that it was his responsibility to aid in their capture. We see the masked man as he reigns Silver to a halt at his small, well-concealed camp. Hello, Silver. Hello, my boy. Hello. Tonto, 
Colonel Dawson wouldn't even listen to me. Uh, him stubborn. He's willing to attack the outlaws, but only on written orders from Washington. You see orders? Yes, but he wouldn't take my word. Him foolish. Remember, Kimasabe, there's some belief that I'm the one who shot the pony rider. What we do, huh? I have an idea, Kimasabe. It might work. What? That? Those two men who are in jail for shooting the pony rider will never be convicted of the murder. There's no proof. No, there's no proof. If they do come to trial, they'll go free. Uh. So nothing would be lost if we set them free. Let them go? Yes. Tonto, we're going to let them go so they'll be punished. Me not savvy. They will be punished if my plan works. And the first step in the plan is to set those outlaws free. We go there tonight? Yes, and we've just time to get ready. First, I'll explain your part of the plan. The Lone Ranger and Tonto rode to town where they found the sheriff and explained their plan. The sheriff agreed to help them. And later that same night, the masked man and his faithful Indian friend raced to the jail, brought their mounts to a halt, and dismounted. Oh, no, 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 Send another bullet into that lock. Isn't that right? That does it. Now open the door, Jake. We're free. Come on, Bard. We're free. This will save us from hanging. Get aboard those horses and head for the hills. I ain't a man to ask questions when I see a chance like this. Come on. I'm right Come behind you. Yeah. Come on, boy. There's a sheriff, Tato. That foot is coming from the cafe with half a dozen men. Sheriff, do him part. Get aboard your horse, Tato. There goes Jake and his friend. Them go to outlaw camp. Yes. Hi-yo, Get him up, white Early the next morning, the sheriff and two deputies rode swiftly to the fort. They demanded that the guards admit them and were taken to the colonel at once. The sheriff explained their errand. Dawson, I tell you, you've got to do something. What's the matter now? You know who I am. I'm sheriff over at Greenville. I know that. What do you want here? I have already told you my position. I know, but this is different. Maybe you didn't know about it, but them two men busted out of jail last night. That's your responsibility. But they'll be heading for the hills, don't you, Savvy? I've already told you that I can do nothing about... But, Dad, about... Dreddit, I'm telling you this because it's your own daughter that's in danger. What's that, Sally? Sure. They'll not, like as not take her with them. They'll use her as a hostage. Colonel Dawson, your own daughter... They wouldn't dare do that. Them critters will dare do anything for their own protection. If they get the girl into the hills, you won't dare make no attack on them. If you do... It'll mean that they'll kill her. If they capture the girl, they've got to be stopped before they reach the hills. That's just it. That's why I come here. We ain't got men enough to chase them. I haven't more than half a dozen men to ride with me. We wouldn't have no luck at all. My daughter. I can't believe it. No, no, they wouldn't do that. They're ruthless, sir. Colonel. Colonel Dawson. What do you want? The secretary reports a man riding south of the fort, carrying your daughter and his horse with him. Good Lord. That's it. Don't you see? They're already heading for the hills. You've got to do something, Colonel. If you don't, sir... How do you know it's my daughter? The dress and hat. The same outfit she wore when she was here the last time. That settles it, sir. We've got to move. If you don't give the orders, Colonel Dawson... But I... I'll give the orders to charge myself. Have the bugler sound assembly. We're going into the hills. Sprang into action. Orders were barked, weapons made ready, horses saddled. The colonel himself leaped to the saddle and placed himself at the head of his soldiers. A lifted hand, a sharp command, and the troop was racing in pursuit of the masked man whose great white horse was thundering toward the timber at the foot of the hill. Let us flash ahead of the soldiers to the outlaws' camp. Jake and his companion are standing before their leader, Wolf who questions them closely about their escape from jail. But why did this masked man and his engine friend let you out? Oh, we didn't stop to ask no questions, Wolf. We were just doggone glad to get free. Uh, don't make sense. First he takes you to jail, then he breaks you out. 
Where'd he do it for? You wouldn't have been convicted, no how. There wasn't no proof again you if what you say is true. Just the same. I'd sooner not take a chance on a jury. Come on, Phil. Who's that coming? That's the man who let us out. Coming here? That's it, Wolf. Don't you see? He wants to join up with the gang. He figured to get in good with you by letting us out. That's what he's coming here for. There he is, him. Coming up the hill. Well, I'll talk to him. Hey, what's he got with him there? Who's that woman in the saddle? Gosh, I don't know. What the Sam Hill is he bringing? There's soldiers coming behind him. They're chasing him here. He led them right to us. I thought you said you'd destroy that order for the soldiers to come here. We did. We've seen it by. Get your guns, boys. Get your guns. we got to fight for our lives. Was sharp and deadly. The outlaws fighting for their lives resisted desperately. They fought with the ferocity of trapped wolves. But the soldiers charged down upon them with the irresistible efficiency of trained troops. They surrounded the camp, and their guns began to cut down the outlaws from all sides. At last, the gang threw away their arms, and Colonel Dawson assumed command. Rope them and take them back to the post. We'll put them on trial there. The doggone Colonel Dawson. That's where they'll get a trial that'll give them what they got coming. And there's the two who killed the pony rider. You can't prove You may not hang for that murder, Jake, but you'll get your punishment for other crimes. And you, sir. You're the one who captured... Your daughter is quite safe, Colonel Dawson. Come, Tonto. Mm -hmm. Me? Um, Give the colonel his daughter's clothes. You? You're the one that was on (laughs) the horse? (laughs) Me same, feller. (laughs) Sally would be glad to know that she loaned her clothes to help our plan. (laughs) By thunder, Dawson... There's the time that one was put over on you. You may take my word for it, sir. The orders to attack were sent to you. Hi, Silver! Come on, Silver, old boy! Stretch out those great legs of yours! Thomas waiting on the trail ahead! Hi, you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.